Honor Club, where honor is real. Ladies and gentlemen, Honor Nation, it's that time of the week again. It's me, the Beer City Bruiser. Of course, the heartthrob of the bounce is Brian Malonis. And it's happy hour with the bouncers. Brian, man, how's your week been, dude? Pretty good. You know, it's, it's not easy being a heartthrob, man. It's, 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 it's not. I mean, I walk around with these dimples 24-7, baby. Yeah, you're just you're just batting the women away, but the one just keeps getting away, huh? Martina just she's not answering your calls, not answering your tweets. <sighs> I mean, she does, but it's like she doesn't even know who I am when I uh, when I tweet at her. It's like I'm a new person every time. She won't leave me alone, and it's just oh. <laughs> oh, why don't you just rub it in a little bit, all right? <laughs> well, how about we move on today? Today's guest, like uh, please, uh, I'll give you the hint. Like as I always do, you don't know who the guest is, so I'll give you a hint. Um. He's probably one of the most educated men in the Ring of Honor locker room. Hmm. I mean, I've seen Lanny Poffo in the <laughs> locker room before. Is it the True. genius? It's not the genius. Oh. But this guy is considered a genius. He's just not the genius. I don't know that. I'm not sure. I'll bring him in. He is the voice of Ring of Honor. He makes us look good through all of his words. He's the man that everyone associates when they hear the great calls. He's called MSG. He's called all the great uh, events that Ring of Honor has. He's none other than the man himself, Ian Rickabon. Ian, how's it going, man? Welcome hey, to Happy Hour. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's been going great. Um, I wish we were, you know, competing again. I wish we were calling matches. Uh, that'll come soon enough. Hope everybody's safe and healthy. I've been following along with you guys and, uh, so I have my partner on, and, and I saw you had Quinn on, and uh, you know, hopefully we can get through this one. You guys asked some great questions, and uh, <laughs> I appreciate the compliment. And uh, Lanny, you know, Lanny Poffo is the genius, and uh, I'm flattered to be in the same conversation. I, I don't write poems like he does, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing the Bruiser failed to mention, Ian, is uh, I believe you're the only undefeated competitor in Ring of Honor. Is this you're absolutely mean? right. I forgot about that. You have the, the literally, if we're talking about the Poffles, you have probably the second greatest elbow drop in history compared to Macho Man, right? <laughs> well, I, I certainly appreciate that. Brian Johnson was on the receiving end. I know he's given you guys some trouble. You, you guys beat him in the, uh, in the game show we did, Sparring Partners. So yeah. thank you for that. Um, I still don't trust this new side of Brian, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, wrestling was fun. The elbow drop, you know, blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. And uh, <laughs> I, I think that's just what happened there. <laughs> I, I did like how that night you literally retired from in-ring action, like uh, duty. You, 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 you got done with the match. You came back. Locker room sellout. We're all around the monitor. And you put your hands up and said, I am officially retiring from in-ring activity as of now. <laughs> I I mean, with the caliber of competition in Ring of Honor, I, I knew that streak wasn't going to last forever. I, you know, not only did I have a former two-time tag champion, Colt Caban, on my team, but I had Gator. I had Todd Sinclair, and I had ROH senior Gary Jester on my team, too. And I know, you know, you all have competed for the six-man titles. You, you just don't find chemistry like that or lightning in a bottle like that uh, every day. So I knew that part of it was my skill and part of it was the team I had around me. Most of it was the team right around me. I knew that, you know, that was a lucky day, and I wasn't going to get in there with, with you guys or PCO or Roosh or Dragon <laughs> Lee. Like, no way. So I knew 1-0 was good enough for me. It was only downhill from there. <laughs> and the streak, the streak that will live on forever. Yeah. That's what you have. Everybody, you know, there, there's streaks that have come and gone in pro wrestling, but Ian Riccoboni's streak will live on <laughs> in the annals of pro wrestling history from now until the end of time. You know what other streak you got, Ian, is, is Brian, I don't know about you, but but whenever I wrestle a match, I always think about how Ian and Caprice are calling it. Um, you know, and, like, I catch myself when we're, when we're, you know, out there and doing the matches and stuff, just hearing your voice going. So that that's a streak that's going to live on forever because you make us look way better than we actually are. I mean, he might be a heartthrob. I mean, I got no teeth. I'm bald. And, and you make me look like a million. Or you make me – you sound – your words make me look like a million bucks. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. It's – um, you know, one of the things I try and do is I – you know, I, I try and talk to everybody before their matches. I try and get insight and strategy and, um, you know, the, the psychology of what you guys intend to do to your opponents and figure out game plans. And that makes me – um, 
you know, one step ahead when I'm about to call the match. And, you know, just having an idea of what, what y'all are, are going to attempt to do or plan to do, um, that gives me some insight into you know, who has the upper hand who's going to win the match. So that, um, you know, that to me, doing my research is key. It's important. It's critical. And, uh, yeah, and being with Caprice, you know, Caprice, he's the kind of guy who's been in there before. So I can, I can lob him something, and uh, he can tell you exactly what's happening and give a great interpretation of what you're seeing in the ring. You know, I don't have too many good things to say about Caprice right now after what he did to me last week. But, uh, you yeah. know, I know I'm a big baseball guy. You're a big baseball guy, Ian. So tell me, you know, did you ever envision yourself being a wrestling play-by-play guy or in the mind of Ian? Uh, not, did you envision Brian, yourself calling calling baseball games? For Brian, something? not only is he a great baseball guy, but Ian, I believe you have a book out on baseball, yeah? I do. It's over I don't want to. I don't want to go too far. It's over on my bookshelf under the Joel and Bead bobblehead. Uh, but one of my big inspirations was Harry Callis, and uh, he's a Hall of Fame announcer for the Phillies. And what you see there is a letter that Harry Callis wrote to me in 2006. Um, I was in college. I had just started, and uh, I wanted to be a broadcaster. And I had gotten into a, a moped accident. I was 50 in the uh, Ocala National Forest. No. on a two-lane highway and, and wrecked a moped. And oh, uh, no. thank God. Yeah, thank God I made it out alive. I lost my yeah. teeth. Um, but <laughs> I know that feeling. Been <laughs> <laughs> there. And, uh, right? <laughs> I got concussed, you know, some bruises, but I made it out alive. And um, when I was recovering, um, one of the things I did was I, you know, just wrote to, you know, to, to famous people for advice, which seems weird. But – um, I was 19 and didn't have anything else to do. And sure enough, Harry Callis wrote that nice letter. And uh, I'm a lifelong Phillies fan and a hardcore Phillies fan. And I listened to Harry Callis on the radio and TV from the time I was in diapers until the day he passed away in, in 2009. So, um, you know, for me, that's the kind of inspiration that I've always had is from Harry Callis. And part of me has always wanted to do baseball. Um, I've commiserated with Tony Schiavone a lot about that. Uh, he'd always wanted to do baseball as well and uh, did some of the games in Charlotte and was part of the field crew in Charlotte uh, in the, the, for, the, for Jackie Crockett. Then he became a wrestling announcer and, and then uh, broadcaster for the Gwinnett Stripers, uh, who played Leah Valley Iron Pigs, my home team. And, uh, you know, we, we've talked a lot about that, the similarities and the differences, but I think I've always wanted to do wrestling. I think baseball was something that I thought might pay the bills, but wrestling has always been the passion. And okay. uh, that's what I've always kind of been focused on. Isn't it great, too, now that you're in the position where, where you can help a young and up-and-coming broadcaster now, kind of like Harry Callis did for you? And, and, and I don't know if anyone's reached out to you, but I'm always constantly telling people that are asking me about announcing shows or, or doing color commentary to, to reach out to you because you're one of the nicest guys in the locker room. You're open for advice, you know, um, and – it's just amazing, you know, that we get to do this as a, a our living, you know, and, and do you find yourself giving advice out to younger guys? I do. Um, and I feel like I, I am paying it forward. At first I was a little shy because I got in at age 27. And when I met Kevin Kelly for the first time, he asked me how old I was. And I, I kind of have a baby face. I didn't grow a beard until I was <laughs> legitimately 25 or 26. And so he thought I was much younger than I was. And um, that's something you got to think about too, you know, when you're, when you're trying to break in is um, you got to consider your age, you for broadcasting, uh, your experience level and so on. And uh, yeah, it was weird because by the time I was 27, I'd done a lot of local cable TV, but I hadn't done wrestling broadcasting. Um, by the time I was 30, I was suddenly the, the ring of honor lead announcer and um, you know, at 30, but with little experience as the lead guy, I kind of felt shy about giving advice, um, even though some wrestlers and some commentators would, would approach about it. But, you know, as the years have gone by, it's three and a half years now in the lead chair. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always welcoming folks to send in commentary. Um, you know, we had, a, we had a young woman, Kat Marino, uh, do some commentary with us in Las Vegas last year. Um, she's reached out, giving her some feedback, and then she ends up on a lot show. Uh, same thing, Joe Dombrowski, very accomplished broadcaster uh, in his own right, was doing Ring of Honor things before me. But um, you know, he is the guy that I turn to if I have a child <laughs> or if I yeah. uh, have, a, have a time conflict. 
And, uh, you know, even he's been gracious enough to accept feedback and, and things like that. And so um, if you're interested in broadcasting, absolutely. You know, I'd be happy to, as time permits, I uh, give critique and feedback. I do always say, um, you know, if you could send me a match that's five to six minutes, that's usually the sweet spot. Yeah. You know, within five to six minutes, I can, you can pick up good habits, bad habits, crutches, and, you know, you can tell if you have areas of opportunity or things that you're really good at. It also saves me some time, too, from listening to an entire 30 minute match. <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to Iron Man Broadway, huh? <laughs> right. right. Hey, this, so, has gone, this has gone great. I know there's like, Bruiser, I know you had a question that you had wanted to get out. One final question. We've had yeah. you here for a while. But this, yeah. we've almost got through this whole thing. This is, no, this is no, a milestone I, for I, us. What? You got what? I, I'm, sorry to, I'm sorry to interrupt you guys. I, I got to take this. This is Caprice. One, one second. Caprice? Hey, Caprice. He's, answering, up, he's answering Caprice. Yeah. yeah jive, jive Turkey? What? The jive jive turkeys? turkeys? Did what he just talking? say jive turkeys? Jive yeah, turkey. I think he just called you a jive turkey just like Yeah, you know what? You week. know what? This interview's over. I'm done with this. No, no, Goodbye, no, no, guys, 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 guys. Yeah, bye, Ian. Be right back. No. Brian, Brian, we are so close. One question. Yeah. We are no. one question away. No, absolutely not. Oh, Last on. week, Caprice oh. hit me with the line, the jive turkey line, called me baloney. Oh. No, I'm not doing it again. We're one question from nailing a full interview, man. Come on. Nope. Sorry. Well, you know what, fans? We'll give it a try next week. We're, we're new at this. We're both a little drunk. And uh, cheers. I'm Beer City Bruiser. That's Brian Malonis. Ian Riccoboni was here until Brian hung up on him. So this is happy hour. Cheers. <laughs>